Hello. Today I will be talking about my final installment in my series, The Future of World of Warcraft. If you have not seen my previous videos, in which I go over many, 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 many topics, including the facts that I see about World of Warcraft, giving players more options, goals for changes, those changes, and phase details about Classic, Classic Plus, and Retail, you can view those videos linked into the description. But for this video, I will be talking about the average timeline of the average character when it comes to progressing during an expansion and different monetization changes I believe would benefit Blizzard and the community. Now I would like to talk about the average timeline for these expansions. And for an example, I will be using TBC Timeline as that is the expansion people are most currently familiar about since they've been playing it for the past year and a half. The timeline being that at the launch of TBC Classic Plus, the first thing everyone will be doing will be obviously leveling from 60 to 70 at the reduced XP amount as I stated in previous videos and should roughly take around 24 hours to complete these 10 levels which is roughly twice as fast as it currently is. And again, the reason for this faster leveling isn't necessarily because I think leveling faster would be better for the game. It is mainly because of the time constraint as each phase is only 12 weeks long. Thus, I do not believe that a vast majority of average and or casual players will be able to clear phase 1 content if the leveling experience is so drawn out. And from doing your leveling through normal dungeons and elite quests, you should be able to get to an eye level of around 110. Additionally, a miscellaneous item outside of the mainly PvE content that I will be covering in the rest of the slide is the time that most people will spend through scaling up their professions, grinding reputations, as I would still require reputations to get into heroic and mythic dungeons, and crafting gear throughout the different phases as each phase has different patterns. While I do put 24 hours here, this in general would be spread out throughout the entire phase 1, and some of this time would be allocated in later phases if someone is looking to switch professions midway through the expansion. Now with the miscellaneous stuff out of the way, I will now talk about the phase 1 timeline, which again would be 12 weeks long and just like it currently is, your first task will be clearing heroic dungeons with your 110 eye level that you got from questing, normal dungeons, and crafted gear. Heroic dungeon gear should be slightly worse than phase 1 raids at 115 eye level, and this 5 eye level increase will be fairly substantial as the stat allocations on the epic quality drops that would drop from these heroic dungeons would be significantly better than 110 eye level blues. And much like it is currently, heroic dungeons fall off fairly quickly and thus my estimate is that the average person would spend six hours per week for the first four weeks trying to gear up to this 115 eye level which should be good enough to start clearing mythic hellfire dungeons and phase one raids which leads to the next content and that is mythic hellfire dungeons would be releasing in phase one and much like i said in my previous videos this eye level would be equivalent to raids, but the eye level jump wouldn't be that significant from previous content as we want to limit the amount of eye level growth throughout the expansion so that people don't feel compelled to get full bis every single phase as this in general isn't going to be that achievable since the expansion only lasts one year and since I believe the average person that would play a classic experience isn't a super hardcore gamer as the average age of classic players is in the high 20s to early 30s, more or less asking someone to play over 20 hours a week and designing a game around someone playing 20 hours a week isn't a system in which I believe would be healthy for the game. But after clearing these mythic level dungeons, which should be fairly hard, resulting in your first few clears at least causing wipes of around 9 to 15 total wipes per instance clear. Then you would go on to phase 1 raids, which is Karazhan, Gruul's Lair, and Mactheridon. That would all drop eye level 120, again because we do not want eye level to grow that fast. And since mythic raids and dungeons in Classic Plus are harder than their original iterations, it'll be fairly common that people will not be full clearing the content in the first few weeks, thus gear will be fairly limited, which is another reason for limiting the eye level growth. So in total, not much in phase 1 changes except for the addition of mythic dungeons, as you will still be raiding and doing heroic dungeons. But this changes a little bit in phase 2, as like I said in my previous videos, each of these raids will have very strong items, like DST, that will be viable for multiple phases, and thus 
even when new content has come out, previous content is not obsolete, which is why the first bullet point I have in phase two is clearing previous raids and previous mythic dungeons, along with grinding legendaries if my legendary system is put into the game. Now with the release of phase two, item level goes all the way up to 125, so another five eye level difference, which will be substantially different than the current TBC system, where most people through phase one were geared with a lot of Karazhan gear, which was eye level 115, and they jumped all the way up to 128, which is the base eye level for TK and SSC. So instead of this massive 13 eye level jump, it'll only be 5 but again, since I suggest the reworking of weaker items, the addition of legendaries, and the addition of strong items like DSP, even though this 5 high level difference may not seem like a lot, there will be a lot of quality items to farm, both in Phase 1, Phase 2, and onward. So now with Phase 2, along with Mythic Hellfire Dungeons, there will be Zangar Marsh Mythic Dungeons that are released, so instead of dungeons being completely obsolete after Phase 1, like it currently works, dungeons will always remain relevant throughout the expansion with these new releases. And a similar story of Phase 2 happens with the Phase 3 content release and the Phase 4 content release. With the same things happening, which is doing previous raids for these legendaries and strong items, the new release of Mythic Terracar Dungeons and Mythic Netherstorm Dungeons, along with the additional 5 eye level increase every single phase. So what this all adds up to is that currently, the average TBC player, I would guess, plays roughly around 9 hours per week, as I believe the current system is extremely raid loggy, and if your character is locked to raids, there's pretty much nothing else you can do, as the PvP scene is not very active due to its limitations. But, if all my suggestions are made from my previous videos and the timeline that I just gave, I believe this new TBC Plus system would at least double the amount of hours that someone could spend improving their character and or doing relevant content that is fun and engaging. And I fell into this issue myself, where outside of Phase 1, where I was playing a decent amount as I was leveling up, farming up gold, maxing out my professions, grinding reps, doing heroic dungeons, but once that ended in phase 1, I pretty much raid logged the rest of the expansion. And this felt extremely bad for me, as even though I enjoyed doing dungeons, as when I played retail, my favorite system in the game was Mythic Plus, you are unable to do this in the classic version of the game. Additionally, from my experience, the current TBC gearing timeline for the average person takes around 16 weeks to get full BIS, and this is based on the average raid not being cleared by the average guild not until the four week mark, as I was part of one of these average guilds during TBC in which it took us three weeks to clear all the content in phase one, six weeks to clear all the content in phase two, two weeks to clear all the content in phase three, and then six weeks to clear all the content in phase four. Phase four being Sunwell. And with this pace, again, being very average, pretty much all 25 members in the group had pretty much full bis outside of maybe one or two items per person at the 16 week mark and then blizzard would release the next phase this would change significantly in my suggested tbc plus system in that bis would in general be received in eight weeks if the content is being cleared in the first four weeks or so which isn't necessarily average as these tbc fights will be much harder as in the average boss will take around 15 wipes to clear, thus, for fairly good guilds, due to the increased number of items that drop per boss, the removal of the amulet bracers and ring slots, and the change to 20-man raids, I believe good guilds will get this in 8 weeks, which is what we want, as for weeks 9 through 12, as each phase is 12 weeks long, they are able to do whatever they want, and that is either speed clearing for the best time, and or trying to parse. But even for the average guild, even though it might take more than eight weeks to get this, as by the eight week mark, I would say most people will finally be able to kill end boss. You'll likely be able to get this in week 10 or 11. But again, like I said in the previous slide, people shouldn't necessarily get stuck on this because since eye level only increases by five per phase, it doesn't necessarily matter if you're still wearing Karazhan gear all the way up to phase three, as the eye level difference is only 10. Thus, your completion of raids isn't necessarily based on gear, but player competency. Now, those are the final points that I have for Classic and Classic Plus. Now for the retail changes, which I won't be making any in this series, as I've already created a video 
about what I would change about Modern WoW, and I published that video about a year or so ago, so you can go and watch those changes that I suggest. But in general, I'm not super worried about Modern WoW, as I believe there's not really that much they can change, at least in their current iteration of Blizzard, as I don't believe current Blizzard is able to make good new systems and or new content. So due to this limitation, I won't be making a lot of suggestions, so just go watch that video, which is linked into the description. But the final change that I will talk on, and which is a pretty big one, is monetization changes that I would suggest to make the game more fun and in addition make it more profitable for Blizzard as they are a corporation and it's unrealistic for us, the gamers, to not pay a high price if we're expecting a very quality experience. Thus, the changes that I suggest are as follows. The first change is that I would suggest to Blizzard to get rid of their three month and six month sub, which are cheaper versions of the sub. Thus, everyone would have to pay monthly at the more expensive price. The positive for Blizzard is that they get more money from this, but the negative for Blizzard and the positive for us, the gamers, is that this requires Blizzard to maintain a healthy state of the game as since the Players aren't locked in six-month contracts that they can't cancel. Blizzard, on a month-to-month -month basis, either has to release new content that is good, release new patches that are competent, and or deal with issues that are in the game, like botting, gold carries, real-life transactions, and things of this nature. Thus, I believe just having a monthly sub holds Blizzard more accountable. The next thing is that I would have no paid boosts for character levels. Now this is negative for Blizzard as this is a loss in revenue but is a positive for the game as people that play their character all the way up to max level should have better knowledge of the class and thus play better and if they play better it should lead to a less toxic community as there won't be a bunch of boosted players that know nothing about their class and or rotation walking around at max level which will lead to them inevitably getting kicked from groups but in addition to this since the leveling process has been greatly reduced because of the condensed time schedule, this paid boost will only save you around 48 hours of time, but even in addition to this, it doesn't necessarily save you 48 hours of time, because I do suggest lots of leveling changes to make the leveling process a fun and fulfilling process in and of itself. Thus, players shouldn't even want to get a paid boost if the leveling process is fun. The next no-brainer is there should be no WoW tokens. The WoW token has made the current retail version of the game a completely pay-to-win game, as there is no item in the game that you cannot get if you can pay gold for it, as you can pay gold directly by just purchasing BOEs off the auction house. You can max out your professions by spending gold, and for non-direct player interactions, you can pay for PvP boosts, you can pay for PvE boosts, you can pay for full raid clears you can get any item you want if you have enough gold thus i believe this is very toxic and you are unable to distinguish yourself from other players as much like my legendary change if you inspect someone that is fully geared in a major city you should be able to easily tell if they cleared all the hard content in the game but if wow tokens are in the game you'll never know if they are a capable player or they just purchased the gear the next change i would suggest is there should be no store for pets or mounts. The reason for this is much like in retail, if Blizzard comes out with a pet or mount in the store, then it is of high quality, and thus the time it took to develop this high quality pet or mount could have been devoted to actually making high quality pets and mounts that actually drop in the game. Thus, there should be no store pets or mounts. The next change, I would make it so that players are unable to transfer to full servers, as I don't believe that massive servers servers of 30,000 people like there currently is, is very healthy for the game. I'm not sure what the exact number would be, but let's just say that Blizzard should put a maximum cap on players for each server at 10,000, and what this would do is it would make it a more of a community feeling, as you would be able to recognize more people that you play with on a regular basis. The next changes I would like to make is relating to the banning of certain people, and that is if someone is caught botting, that account should be permabanned, and I don't know the logistics or the technology behind it, but if you could permaban their email account so that that email account can't be linked to any future World of Warcraft account, or if you could ban their IP address, or if you could ban credit cards relating to that account, or pretty much anything that would be related to that account should be banned. The reason I am so strict on this 
is because, again, I feel like this is somewhat relating to the WoW token in that if you can force your real-world wealth into distinguishing yourself from other gamers, I believe you are ruining the game. Thus, it should be punished severely. The next thing I would do is that I would reset the gear and gold for anyone caught gold buying. The reason I would not ban these people is because I believe it would be healthier for the game to have a large population. And since currently, I believe that gold buying is a fairly rampant issue in Classic. I don't believe banning roughly 10 to 15% of the population is necessarily a good thing. But what would be a good thing is the hilarious reaction that some people would have as they log into their account and all their gear and gold is deleted if they are gold buying. Thus, they can still play the game, but they are set back multiple weeks or months, and thus the choice will be on them to either regrind that gear and or quit the game, and hopefully they would learn their lesson and play the game as it was designed the second go around. And this would also be the same for advertising carries. I believe games are meant to have fun in and not to pretend that you're good at the game or something along those lines. So any gladiator PvPer that is advertising gold carries would have their gear and gold reset and titles removed. And same thing goes with PvE. If people are caught advertising carries through the more difficultly tuned content to do full clears and funnel that person gear, anyone get, getting caught advertising this in either trade chat, looking for group chat, and or discord channels will have their gear and gold reset again because we want a healthy population of individuals so we can't again ban 10% of the population that are doing these carries and again it would be funny for these gladiators in pvp and or high-end raiders that are doing these gear and gold sales it would be funny for them to log in naked into a major city and completely flip out and since a lot of the things that i've suggested are fairly negative in terms of revenue for Blizzard. I will now go into the increasing prices that Blizzard should be charging players of the game. And again, the only option would be to sub to the game for $20 a month. This is higher than the current rate of $15 if you do it monthly and fairly substantially higher than the three month to six month discount if people are using that method. Again, the reason for this is because if we are to expect a quality game, we should be paying a quality price and $20 should be fairly achievable, especially for, again, the player base is in their late 20s and early 30s or even older than this. So it's not like we're asking a bunch of kids to pay this extra amount of money. It's a bunch of dad gamers. So especially if there's rampant gold buying where people are buying hundreds of dollars of gold, I'm sure you can afford a $20 sub. And in addition to this, there should be different tiers tiers of sub that don't improve your character but give you extra mtx that isn't achievable in game so while i do believe that having pets and mounts in the game diminish pets and mounts that you can achieve by just playing the game i believe that since spells that you cast in the game are casted on such a regular basis that any MTX that you could apply to these spells would be a greater benefit to the consumer and would be more lucratively profitable for Blizzard. I believe that Blizzard should offer a sub in which you get a one month sub and access to an MTX library in which you can pick a spell effect on any spell that you choose. So an example being that if you play a Fire Mage and you want a new MTX for your Fireball, maybe you do a premium sub for $30 a month and you spend your one MTX spell effect on fireball and this would turn your regular fiery fireball into a dragon looking fireball and since fire mages cast fireball very very frequently most fire mages would find this ten dollar extra value fairly valuable if they are able to make this thirty dollar purchase and in addition to this i would offer a sub which is similar to the premium sub except for instead of one mtx you would have three different mtx's and in addition to this if your character is clicked in game you would have the rare spawn silver dragon portrait to distinguish yourself from others which would just add more value to the players and make it more lucrative for blizzard now while in a perfect world there would be no premium subs no mtx and no super premium subs again 
I want Blizzard to be a financially stable company in which they can hire additional GMs and or developers to make the game better, and thus the only way they can hire more competent people, as I believe they currently are severely lacking this quality, is to give them more money, and I believe MTX, at least on spells, is the best way to go about this. And an additional miscellaneous point that I would like to make is that in 2019, the AWC and MDI players were robbed of hundreds of thousands of dollars, as at that time, Blizzard was selling in-game pets to sponsor the AWC and MDI winners for that year. And Blizzard essentially stole all this money, which ended up being around $2.6 million in sales that they were supposed to give a quarter of it to the winners of this 2019 competition. Since this looks extremely bad for Blizzard, I believe Blizzard should pay this money back and more. So instead of paying these people that won the 25% that they initially said they were going to, but pretty much stole, they should pay the 100% full amount of all the sales that they made during this 2019 time period. And thus this $2.6 million should be distributed to all those people. Obviously this is a one-time thing and it's three years back, uh, but I believe this generosity or this admission of Blizzard that they screwed up royally by basically stealing money from these players, paying this money back would do a lot of good for the community and a lot of people would see Blizzard in a better light. This will conclude my six part series of the future of World of Warcraft. I hope you guys found enjoyment out of some of these ideas and I hope these ideas spread through the community and get to Blizzard. Although I have very, very low hopes that Blizzard will be making significant changes to both retail and classic versions of the game, as I believe they're kind of a little bit too stuck in their ways, thinking that they're always right, and or an unwillingness to make drastic changes. As if you look historically, it's pretty much been a downward trend for 10 years or so. And while I do believe that they are currently listening to the player base more so than they were previously in the past four years, just because they're listening to the player base doesn't mean that this increases their ability to create competent systems. Thus, at least for me, I have personally played WoW off and on since the original release of TBC, with many multi-year gaps in between some of these bad expansions. And the main reason I'm creating this video series is more or less a goodbye to Blizzard, as I will remember TBC fondly, as I was a middle schooler when I played the original release, and I found the release of classic TBC to be at least somewhat satisfying to the end of my WoW playing career. So I guess thanks for the memories that you've given me, Blizzard, but you've changed to the point in which I don't really recognize you anymore, so I guess this is farewell. If you have any questions about this video, or the video series as a whole, put them in the comments and I'll get to them. Thanks.